What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 166 of the Games and Grouse podcast. My name is Sonny G here, as always, with Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Very good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you very much. Not too bad. Plodding good along, stuff. as you do. As you do. Second week in a row for the podcast in the new year. We've, we've got off to a flyer. We have. We're doing it. We're getting there. An absolute flyer. So much so that we deserve a round of applause, I feel. We do indeed. Um, I've moved everything. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Woo. Thank you, guys. We, we appreciate the round of applause. Yes, thank you. Even if we instigated it ourselves. Yeah. I hope everyone listening to this also claps while they were listening to it. Yeah, I think they will. I think I think they do every time they hear that soundbite. Yeah, I think so. Now, just on just on the bus, on the train, somewhere just... Randomly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for everyone who listened to last week's podcast. We tried a few different things with social media and it seemed to work. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're just going to keep doing those things. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have to try and be so, sociable. So I'm not very good at it. So- yeah. Sociable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, mm. we'll, we'll figure it out what we need to do. But yeah, last week was good. We posted some like clips and stuff on TikTok and YouTube shorts and stuff, and it seemed to work. So yeah, um, yeah, the listens went up and views went up. So that's cool. Good stuff. Yeah, they probably like didn't realize that there was two such big idiots <laughs> on the face of the planet. Yeah, still can't be helped. Oh, there's a, there's 165 episodes of this shit. Let's uh, let's go back. <laughs> yeah, listen to all the nonsense. Yeah, what, one's called Front Bum. I'm in. These guys <laughs> are the the best. Yeah, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten podcast. Um, all the reviews on iTunes and Spotify and all them other places. In fact, do that if you listen to this podcast. Then wherever you listen to it, review it. Yes. Okay, thumbs up, five stars. Um, whatever it is you do, everywhere else. Leave a comment. Yeah. See, these guys are the best. Greatest podcast yeah. probably of all time. Yeah, easily of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got a, um, a jam-packed podcast this week. We're going to talk all the usual stuff. Plus, we have a special guest. So uh, we'll be calling our special guest in a, in a little while. I'm really excited about this. It's taken a long time to arrange. Um, a long time. And we just hope that it lives up to your expectations. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Took a long time. It's a bit of a language barrier, so it took, took a little bit. So uh, yeah, we've had to learn a new language for it, but uh, thankfully our guest also learned our language. Uh, so we'll yeah, don't worry. We'll 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 get through the interview, and it's um, it's going to be a great time. Like I said, you know, we wanted to do different things for 2023 here on the Games and Grass podcast, and you know, we're 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 doing that starting with this episode. We've got a great a big interview, a big star coming on this podcast uh, in just a a short while so (laughs) yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be good it's gonna be good it's gonna be easy hell yeah it is um (laughs) finn what have you been playing um more rocket league um i've finally been playing almost exclusively uh the rumble mode it's just so much fun Mm. with the power and things um i managed to get up to platinum rank on the whatever it's called nice the uh, ranking thing like, oh, the yes. ranking thing. Yeah, ranking thing. Yes, like finally, because I kept getting like one win away into gold, and then losing like five matches in a row. It's like no, like, finally we got there. Um, so ranked. I'm going to keep playing this. If I'm getting higher, but I think platinum is probably going to be the highest I get. What's higher than that? Uh, it's platinum. There's diamond, and then there's champion, and then it's grand champion, and then there's the top one. It's a common anymore. Right. So, yeah, okay. there's, there's still a ways to go, but I'm not going to try and get any higher than platinum. I don't think it's going to play for fun. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Uh, more God of War. I've been having God of War and playing it a lot more recently. Mm-hmm. Still going through it. I keep thinking I'm near the end and I'll find a new area with like 20 million collectibles to find. It's like, oh, uh, okay. How fine. many hours in on you? <laughs> I've lost track. At least almost 40, I'd say. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's um, from what the general consensus seems that it's like a, a 40 five ish hour game so you can't be that yeah. far off now yeah i know i've got 40 out of 48 ravens and i know where at least five of them are so it can't be much left no yeah but you're getting through it that's the most important thing you're getting through it yeah we're doing it it's, it's, you sound it's, thrilled about it you know <laughs> you really do i'm playing it, the, the story's like 10 out of 10 the biome is 10 out of 10 characters 10 out of 10 gameplay the 
like six out of ten, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I think that's harsh. I it, do think that's a harsh might, score. Might be a little harsh, but man, the kids have been been playing it too much. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I I am enjoying it for it for the story and things. So it's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds so convincing. It's unreal. <laughs> story good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that's probably about it for games this week. It's got the Bournemouth Rocket League. Um, just trying to think. Yeah, that's probably about it. Uh, how about yourself? Um, I've been playing a few different things. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see me or not. I've just got a notification saying that my camera's gone off, but I'm not sure it has. Oh, yeah, you're frozen. You're frozen in place. But you can still hear me. You still hear, yeah. Sure. Okay, we'll just go with that for the meantime and then it'll, we'll figure it out. It'll come back. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I'll just, I'll just freeze on that one freeze frame that I can see also frozen on there. Um, I love when StreamYard does shit like this. That's really cool. It's great, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been playing I've been playing God of War. I've dipped back into God of War again. Nice. Um, and I'm still enjoying it. I'm still enjoying the characters, the gameplay, uh, and I'm pretty much enjoying everything about it. So uh, I'm not having the same sort of negative experience. That you, you know, Not a negative experience. I think that's probably the wrong... The wrong way to, to word it, but um, I'm having a, probably a more enjoyable time with it than you are. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm enjoying it, and it's great, and I just love the characters. I love the, the world, and I enjoy the gameplay. So yeah, I'm just enjoying it. Cool. Good stuff. Still no spear for me yet, though. No spear? What spear? There's no spear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to spoil it for you. Yeah. God, I don't know. I know. I'm some sorry, pe- some I'm people really spoil this. Need to be more careful. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I, 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 for that, I apologise. Um, also, people need to. Stop. So yeah, there's that. Pe- sorry, oh, sorry. I've got the tangents. People need to stop putting spoilers in the thumbnails on YouTube. So I keep running into things. Um, nothing too bad yet, but it's like, okay, you need to stop. I need to stop looking at YouTube God of War? thumbnails. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> YouTube keeps recommending me these things. It's like, no, <laughs> I'm not looking. So yeah, I mean, I I do really like God of War, um, and you're right. I think people should stop posting spoilers. Don't post spoilers of anything anywhere, anyway. Yeah. Just don't be a dick. Yeah, think think about what you're posting to do. Yeah. If it's like an old yeah. game, then fine. But if it's like a game that came out a few months ago, just no. Stop. Yeah. Give it a little while before. It just don't post spoilers in general. How's that? Yeah. Much much better. Just stick to your thumbnails. If you're pulling a stupid face. So mm-hmm. the people know that you're some sort of influencer. An arrow pointed to something. Yeah. Yeah. In big yellow writing or something. <laughs> Another thing is that okay. kind of that kind of thing yeah. works. There's like you, if you want to get views, you kind of have to do things like that. If you're like, isn't that ridiculous that kind of video, though? Yeah, it's so annoying. Anyway. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's really annoying. It's like it's one of my. I think it's one of my internet pet peeves. That. Oh, me too. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just like go off the title of the content. Yeah, exactly. God of War stuff. Oh, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Instead of a guy going, Boo. with like a, an arrow, like you said, and big yellow fucking writing and stuff. It's like, bait. Kratos dies? It's like, no. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big God of War thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Big thing that doesn't happen. This makes no mention of the video. head falls off? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> and this photo. Don't be on. dumb. Yeah. Don't be a dummy. Don't be a dummy. Now one of those things is going to happen. Yeah. We're going to look like ourselves are spawning it. You can play yeah, the game. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, Australia's head is going to fall off. Like, oh shit! We actually, <laughs> actually did happen. We yeah. spoiled it for people. Yeah. <laughs> people are like, God damn games and grabs. I, was, I fucking knew there was something wrong with them. <laughs> Idiots. Know. So yeah. God damn it. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've been playing a fair bit of WWE 2K22. Oh, cool. Um, I've got some achievements that I want to sort of uh, get. I want to go through the My Rise uh, thing, which I'm actually enjoying quite a lot so far. Yeah, pretty good. No, it was funny. Um, um, you know, the a while ago, the match with Ronda Rousey and Liv Morgan at the weird spot at the end where... Like they got, the, I think uh, Liv got the three count, but she like tapped out first, but the referee didn't see it. Yes, uh, that's in the game, and it happened. The game came out way before that spot, so they literally, they literally stole, stole that spot from the game. 
It's on the female Jesus Mobile Christ. story. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. Everyone hated that as well. <laughs> yeah, this is so dumb. So I couldn't believe yeah. it when I got to it. I was like, wait, <laughs> didn't this game come out way before <laughs> that happened? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying that. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I like, I like to that right. game a lot. Yeah, it's it's decent. Some of the, the character animations are a little crude during uh, cutscenes and stuff. But look, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I've done a little bit of the uh, the my is it my team is that what it's called no my faction yeah that yeah. I've done a little bit of that I don't really understand the point of it I, I, I get that it's like a card based thing like the NBA my team and FIFA Ultimate Team and stuff like that but they're online modes mainly this really just seems a little bit pointless another pointless thing about it is that the new when they update the cars they update the attires for the wrestlers in that mode and that mode only yeah so why you... can't you just update the attires for like so they brought out a rear ripley one where she's like judgment day rear ripley oh that's awesome but you can't like, like that's then. cool yeah but you but... can only play it in my faction yeah it's stupid oh, i got like a new day one you know from wrestlemania when they came out on that you know Sevier box just like a beardless yeah. uh Sevier woods and they got all their attire from that but this is cool i wish i could play it anywhere else other than this scrappy yeah, mode it's like <laughs> it's there for micro like, hey, and nothing else yeah, it's like, hey, just put it in the, the, the full game as well. Yeah. It's, it's weird. I don't really understand why they've chose to do it that way. I guess money, but um, yeah, that's, that's something that they could... I mean, it also goes to show that it's doable. Yeah. That they can actually update attires. They're just choosing not to in the in the full game. Exactly. It's weird, isn't it? That you can you clearly have the ability to do this. You just... Anyway, you're just not doing it because money. It's literally all it is. Loot boxes and money. That's literally exactly what it is, yeah. It's yeah. just, oh, hey, uh, yep, money. Yeah. If you've got to do that, at least let us use them in the actual game as well. Yeah. Yeah. But no. I will. Thanks, 2K. Yeah, cheers, 2K. That's great. Yeah. So great. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been playing a bit of WWE 2K23 and enjoying it. Uh, I still think it plays really great, to be fair. I think it looks great. Yeah, but awesome. um, yeah. So there's that. What else have I been playing? I've been I've been doing the I've been hammering the Microsoft Rewards stuff. So I played played Black Desert and I got the uh, what I needed to for that. Yeah, I did that as well. Actually, yeah, just went to a big camp of like goblins, whatever it was. And just stood there for like twenty minutes, <laughs> killing them all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely not something that I'm gonna play full time. No, nah, same. Not for me. And in fact, it was deleted as soon as I did. The uh, weekly quest. Yeah, I just played it on the cloud. <laughs> you have to install it. No, that's fair enough. Actually, yeah, yeah I should have just done that. God damn it! But <laughs> yeah, anyway, I did it, and uh, so that was that. That's a game that I mean, it's just too confusing. Yeah, it's too, uh... the, the menus are too little, the writing's too small, and it's like, yeah. I don't know. Am I supposed to enjoy this somehow? Yeah, it's literally made for PC and then ported over to console. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, but yeah, I'll play that. So I also played Dishonored two for the. Maybe like twelve or so stealth kills. Is it easy to do? Oh yeah. So if you there's, so there's a guy on YouTube called Rewards Hunter who shows like like how to do it basically the easiest oh, okay. way. Um so you check that guy out. Uh, so basically the way to do it is to start the mission, um, save the game right before some enemies, kill a couple of enemies, reload the save, rinse and repeat. Oh and it just works? Yeah, it's works. It keeps track of every kill, so Oh yeah. great, that's awesome. Shout out to Rewards Hunter on YouTube. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, that sounds really good. Okay, so I'll do that. I've got, I, I have installed it. My internet's decent, so it didn't take long to do. But yeah, okay, yeah, I'll do. I'll hop on and do that. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm killing it at the minute. I'm just doing it every single day, religious. Yeah, same. I've been doing it for ages. It's like I, I, I literally got three game bars now until I think it was like last week, until like April or something. And I've already got yeah. enough points for the next three months. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> that absolutely rules. So, so I'm just gonna keep doing it and hammering it, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's just becoming a, a religion now for me. So, yeah. But it's cool because it, it does make you try out some different games. Yeah. Yeah, like I would never so. have played Black Desert Online. Uh, probably never play Absolutely it again. Absolutely not. <laughs> probably no. never play it again, but at least I know now that it's a game I don't need to look at anymore. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. On this game, it's for me. I know this now. Yeah. But also, you know, if I like Dishonored 2, I remember playing the first one. I wasn't very good at it, but I remember, you know, if I, if I like Dishonored 2, I, you know, I might carry on with it. Yeah. They are good games, but yeah, like you, I just couldn't get into it for whatever reason. The first one, yeah, um, I don't know why either, because it, it, you know, it, it's cool. It's it, you know, it plays like 
pretty much any Bethesda game. Yeah. But yeah, cool, cool game, cool idea. It just lots of people love it. It's just it's for me. It's for me. I'm not a big fan of stealth, no, stealthy games, but yeah. Yeah, same. But as you know, that's pretty fucking obvious from the fact that I'm very <laughs> gung ho on everything that I play. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. If I can play Dishonored with assault rifles, I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. But I feel like that maybe defeats the object of the game. <laughs> just a tad. Yeah, a little bit. But <laughs> oh well, it's all good. But yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try out Dishonored too. Um, but to be honest, I haven't really had chance to play much over the last few days. So um, I've been just been dipping in and out when I can. I've been playing some eFootball, uh, getting my daily rewards on that. Cool. Um, and that's where a lot of my time has been spent. WWE 2K, um, eFootball, and, um, you know, God of War when I get a chance. But I'm going to – so I've got a few things on my Xbox that I want to – to play, there's a few achievements that I want to sort of mop up on Forza Horizon 5. Nice. And I finally want to get the 1,000 gamer score for Retro Mania Wrestling. It's easy to do. I've just been so fucking lazy and not doing it. <laughs> That's fair. Um, but I've, I've I've got quite a few achievements this month, actually. I've been playing, actually, I've been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves as well oh, yeah. um, with um, with Darren and Steve. I've been playing a fair bit of um, Sea of Thieves again, getting really back into that and really enjoying it as well. Finally, really understanding what the game's about and actually becoming pretty good at it which is uh, which is a nice refreshing change also <laughs> that's awesome and they've added tons of stuff there's more islands now and there's more quests and stuff to do and there's yeah there's just there's so much to do on the game yeah it's come a long way since launch it didn't really have a lot of anything but it's clearly oh, worked God, hard yeah. to make it good so yeah that's great as well isn't it so, yeah. They know what to do, yeah great game Cool. And it also helps with my Game Pass rewards of playing a Game Pass game daily, so that, that works. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Um, I've just been, yeah, super busy over the last few days. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pick up again and um, probably have more tales to tell you next week of the stuff that I've been playing. But, yeah, cool. that's that's what I've been playing basically in a nutshell. Excellent. Good stuff. More games. So, yeah, um, much in the way of gaming news this week. Um, <clears throat> not really, to be honest. I think it's all been wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Gaming news, something like that, look real quick. I should have looked beforehand, really, shouldn't I? But... I know that Microsoft have a developer showcase coming up on the 25th. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's some more um, Laser Plus games added to uh, the like, highest tier. Uh, yeah. Let's have a look what that was. I know Cyber Filter 3 is on there now. I had one, on tier, one or two on there already. Yep. Please you add it to it. I'm just trying to find a list somewhere. Here it is. Can I get game spot? Um, so yeah, Back for Blood, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, uh, Life Good. is Strange, Life is Strange Before the Storm, Jet the Far Shore. Great. <laughs> just sounds, called, sounds awesome. Yeah. Just Cause 4 Reloaded, uh, Omino, and Erica. And also for PS, I think PS1, maybe two games, uh, Cyber Builder 3, Star Wars Demolition, and Hot Shots Golf 2. Okay, Star Wars Demolition I'd never heard of. No, me neither. It might be a PSP game. Let's have a look. I think it's a PS1 game. I'm not, uh, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100%, but I think when I looked oh. uh, a day or so ago, I think it said PS1 game, but I'd never heard of it. Yeah, you're right. It's a PS1 game, also on the Dreamcast. Interesting. Well, what is it? I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, it's a vehicular combat game set in the Star Wars universe created by both Luxo Flux and LucasArts. Great. So what is it, like Destruction Derby, but Star Wars? Pretty much. Seems that way. Yeah. Wow. They will just chuck that license on anything. <laughs> Pretty that is much. unbelievable. No wonder I've never heard of it. I bet it's the absolute pits of, of gaming. <laughs> Probably. The fact like that we... fucking WWE Crush Hour. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like... They're clearly desperate for games to put on there. It's like it's such a huge backlog of games for PS1 and PS2. Why are we playing? Why are all games? Star Wars, <clears throat> whatever it's called. What have we gone? Demolition. <laughs> Demolition. Yeah. Like to put Tomb Raider yes. on there. You know, Tomb Raider bloody yeah. Croc. I don't know. Gex. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, exactly. Metal Gear Solid. There's so many awesome but games. Cool Borders. These games that are on the PlayStation Classic, the Mini. Yeah. Just put, why can't you just put them on there? We don't have to have trophies. Just put them on there. Yeah. Why not? Tekken 3. You've got Tekken 2 on there. Put Tekken 1 on. Wipeout. I don't even know if that's on there or what. But look at all these 
games that you could put on there, and you're putting Star Wars Demolition on there. Yeah. Hey, Sony, look at the games that you own (laughs) and the games that you could put on there and do that. Yeah, it can't be that hard. It it surely can't be. You can get them on PS3, or you could do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The original Grand Theft Auto, put that on there. Yeah. GTA 1 and 2, why not? Yeah, GTA London. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the choice is baffling, in, to be quite honest, of the games that they do put on. It's very strange. Like, top and filter games? Yeah, makes sense. Classic PlayStation games. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, like, I don't know. But you're right, though. You reeled off, like, well, we, between us, we've just reeled off a ton of games that could just be on there. Yeah, like Tomb Raider, at least, seems like a no-brainer because they're you know All of they're them. known for being yeah they're known for being so many games. I mean, the first one came up with Sega Saturn, I know, before someone corrects me. Uh, but yeah, it's they're more, more you know known as PlayStation games. Nobody remembers it for being a Sega Saturn game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Not a single person go. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> but uh, that game was on the Sega Saturn. <laughs> you know, there's someone out there who will say, um, actually. It's on the yeah, Sega Saturn. Stroking their neck beard. <laughs> Actually, Tomb Raider was on the Saturn. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone remembers it from being the, the fat case PS1 game. It's yeah. Like a double case, wasn't it? Yeah. Why, 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 did them, why did that exist? Who knows? I've actually got it down there, actually. But yeah, it's so strange. Because it didn't have two discs, did it? It just had a disc and a book. Yeah, just a one. I think I saw a rumor, I don't know if it's sure or not, that like when they were producing games they ran out of the fat like european game cases we've got so they had to okay. resort to using double cases same reason crash bandicoot's got a double case uh, but crash that's bandicoot sure not has a double know. case does it crash bandicoot yeah the first one but does least, it oh yeah. it does actually you are right oh i do think and it came the with a demo version disc. of it um yeah. i'm not sure because the platinum version of it so obviously when they started doing the platinum collection i know that crash then went to a fat box yeah and Tomb Raider did as well, but yeah, yeah it did. It's... But like the original ones, you're right; they were like you know, I so yeah, because they're double disc cases, like Command and Conquer. Yeah, was a double disc game. Metal Gear was a double disc game. Yeah, exactly. It's strange, but some mm. double disc games come in regular cases anyway. Could have one on each side. That's true. Also, yeah. Gran Turismo Two is a good example of this. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Command and Conquer Red Alert. First one has double case, second one has the one case, two discs on both sides. Also, what a game that is. Yeah, great game. Yeah. Love Commander Conquer. So good. Yeah, what a strange franchise. It's just like it's just they don't make them anymore, do they? No, they made loads, but yeah, recently. Maybe Red Alert three on Xbox. Was it on three sixty that or Yeah, I think so. Three sixty. Yeah. That's hmm. the last one I played. Yeah, great games. Man, I love the PS one so much. Yeah, so good. Me too. So good. Like, it's, and the games are still so playable now as well. Like, we, I know we yeah. talk about this a lot. Like, we go back to like retro games and stuff like that. But the PS One is like, it's just so good. Yeah, absolutely. The start of like three D gaming. It's like the start of what like games could be. Like games like Metal Gear Solid was like blew people away back then. Like Final Fantasy Seven. You know, games like that. Yeah, is what is what kick started like. Put gaming into the highest, into their like spotlight. I guess you could say. Yeah, because obviously what we were used to <clears throat> prior to that was the Mega Drive and the 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 SNES. Yeah, exactly. Like two D platformers, stuff like that. Yeah, the kids, like, so kids the games. leap obviously from that was huge. Yeah, I mean like kids games to being like oh, okay, this is more adult orientated. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I remember first seeing Wipeout and being like, whoa, <laughs> okay, this is like the future. Yeah, I'm in the future now. Exactly, yeah. Look at the graphics, so realistic. Yeah. To be fair, Wipeout absolutely rips. It's so good. Yeah, like even amazing. now it's good. Yeah. It's so fun. So fun. Man, I love the PS one. But yeah, Sony do better with the collection that you've got on this, you know, PlayStation Plus thing you've got, plus expansion pack. <laughs> yeah. PlayStation Plus plus expansion pack. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But the expansion pack absolutely fucking blows. <laughs> like PlayStation Plus games monthly, good. PlayStation Plus plus expansion pack sucks. Yeah, it's not great. Do better. Come on now. Yeah. 
Give us the games that we want. We'll pick them. Like we'll we'll liaise with you and we'll we'll pick the games. Yeah. Come and talk to us, Sony. We know you're listening. Yeah. We know yeah, you, you definitely listen to this. Absolutely. Why would you not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be better. God damn it, the PS1 absolutely rules. Oh my god. <laughs> Smackdown two. I know they can't have it on there, but oh my god, SmackDown Two is so good. Yeah. I've got a SmackDown 2 memory card and some music at the minute. Nice. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> that is cool, actually. Where is it? Like a, is it? Is it to hand? Can you show us? Uh, yeah, two seconds. I'll go grab it. BRB. Excellent. Just run over my headphone cable. Memory cards. See, that was cool as well. You just be able to trans, you know, transport your saved data to your friend's house just on the memory card. Yeah, it's so cool. Here it is. Oh, that's so good. Where did you get that? Uh, this is from eBay. It came with the motherboard SmackDown 2. It came with it. So, yeah. Wow, that Bargain. rules. It's so cool. And that's in great condition, too. Yeah, it's really good, actually. Yeah. Cool. I used to have a GTA 2 one as well, back when I was younger. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because you're good. old now. You just had a birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 35. Oof. That's, you're so old now. I know. You can see a bad thing. Like, I'm still older. Know. <laughs> but we're, we're we're still super young in yeah. our heads. We are. We, we don't we don't look old. We're still young, young at heart, and all yeah. that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, young at heart. Young. You know, we're we're both physically fit men for our thirties. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> Healthy eating and exercising works. Turns out it does. Yeah, who knew? Yeah, who knew? Who knew that being healthy worked? <laughs> It's going to be a fat pile of garbage for the rest of my life, but apparently uh, <laughs> working out and eating better is, is good. Yeah, good stuff. Highly recommended. Yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, right, I think, we should, uh, I think we should call our special guest. I think we should. I think, it's, I think it's time. I think it's time as well. So, guys, we're super excited about this. Um, you know, we don't do, you know, phone-ins, you know, or anything like that very often, but we felt... Like we wanted to do something different for uh, 2023, so we've got a very special guest today. Uh, it is Billy, who, of course, is the main protagonist of Goat Simulator. So let's go ahead and well, let's call let's call Billy. It's right. a big moment for the Games and Grass podcast. All right, here we go. So he has trouble using phones. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Billy. Hi, Billy. How's it going? <laughs> Good to speak to you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 we're good. We're, we are good. Thank you for asking. Yes. We really appreciate that. So firstly, you know, thank you for coming on the show. It's, uh, it's a real honor to, to speak to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. It's, uh, it's cool that you've been listening for... Uh, for so long, oh, um, you know, since the beginning, one of our, one of our, you know, long-term listeners by the sounds of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so firstly, I mean, how did you, you know, get your start? Cause obviously I know that goat simulator is pretty popular with everybody, but how did you get your start, uh, in goat simulator? <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So did they approach you to make the game or did you? No, go to them. I see. I see. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's really interesting. I mean... Um... <laughs> right. No, sorry. Something's not like laughing. It's, you know, it's just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> not laughing at you. It's laughing with you. It's fine. Yeah. So what, what, what kind of games do you play when... Um... Aside from Goat Simulator, obviously, I know that you're uh, an avid gamer yourself. I know that you've got um, controllers that, uh, you know, suit your hooves and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. <laughs> so if there's just two big buttons you can use with the hooves, right? Is that how it works? <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah. That's really, really good. Um, I, you know, I, I really love... Um... <laughs> No, I swear he's not laughing at you. Is you know, he's laughing. He's laughing with us. He's laughing at the situation. You know, he's just been playing Goat Simulator. He found it very entertaining and fun. So that's that's why he's laughing. Yeah. I... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I, I really love Goat Simulator. Um, and I, I think, you know, it's just a, a really special game. Have you played Deer Simulator at all? <laughs> I don't think it likes that one. Didn't oh, you're not, you're not into Deer Simulator? <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, I know that they've really stolen the idea from from Goat Simulator, and they try to take it to another level. But you know, I think Goat Simulator is still the the more the more popular of the simulator franchises. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Um, I need to ask because obviously we are a wrestling podcast as well. Are you a fan of wrestling? <laughs> mm. Stone Cold, yeah, I like, I like Stone Cold too. He's not wrestled for a while. I think he's retired now, but yeah, yeah, I mean, he was great at WrestleMania this year. So it's cool that you, um, you know, you got to see him maybe wrestle one final match. Although, you know, he's been in the gym and stuff. I've seen on on social media and everything. So you never know; you may get another Stone Cold match. Yeah, maybe. <coughs> yeah, mm. yeah, that's cool. So, um, what do you think to uh, be- before we let you go? What do you think to the the Vince McMahon situation currently? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a bit strange. I agree. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and um, yeah, what what are your what are your hopes and dreams for the future? What's the future of the Goat Simulator franchise looking like? <laughs> cool. So can we, can we expect to go to Simulator Four soon? Or maybe two. Go back to do two because you kind of skip two a little bit. <laughs> cool. Okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, look, Billy, uh, we really appreciate you joining us here tonight, uh, today on the Games and Grats podcast. You know, you're our first of many guests, probably, but we, we hope that you do come back and join us. Cool. I think, I, yeah. I think, it's, I think that's a yes. Any, any, uh, anything you wanted to sort of finish with, Billy? <laughs> okay. Right, okay. Okay, that's great. So thank you, the star of Goat Simulator. Billy, everybody, round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> thank you, Billy. Uh... <laughs> is that the dumbest thing we've ever done? But I think it is <laughs> definitely up there. Yeah, definitely up there. <laughs> it's definitely up there. It, yeah, it's for sure up there. Just like um, to point out that Sonny's idea, just in case, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, very mature. It's very, very yeah. mature. <laughs> Thanks, Billy, for uh, for coming on. Yeah. That was great. You're welcome. He's, yeah. He said you're welcome. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is so dumb, by the way. <laughs> like, I, I can't believe that uh, we actually went ahead and did that. Yeah. It was, it was a fun idea. It was a great idea, and I think I think it went really well. Yeah, hopefully other people will find it as fun as we do. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Them not, noises, though. man. Them goat noises, just they get me. I, I don't yeah. even know. <laughs> They're just so stupid. And goats make the best noises. Goats make the best noises. I'm just happy that that we were able to bring that to the world. Yeah. Very <laughs> <laughs> uh, <so> good. <sighs> right. I mean, it's been. <laughs> It's been a bit of a news week in wrestling, hasn't it? Uh, boy, what happened? I missed, missed, missed it. Plenty of stuff happened. NXT <laughs> New Year's Eve, or how could you forget? Of course. It's pretty good, actually. Jinder Mahal came back. Yay. Don't hinder Jinder. Oh, Don't hinder Jinder. <laughs> so they... they uh, we might as well talk about that whilst we've mentioned it. Yeah. So they paired him with uh, Veer and Sanger. Yeah. In the show. The back. Yeah. Um... And I, I'm into that, to be honest. I think they could be a really good, like, faction because they're all big guys. They're all big, intimidating guys. I think that could work really well. Yeah, me too. You know, you know, former WWE champion and all that. I think he wasn't yeah. the most popular <laughs> champion of all time, but yeah, I liked I liked Ginger as champion. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he had some he had some good moments. I liked his, the, the Bollywood boys being with him as well. That was entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, I, I I like Jinder as champion. It was funny because it was, you know, it boiled so much piss on the internet, but it was something different at the time. Um, and yeah, it I, I feel like it worked. And Jinder was a, a great heel champion. I thought. Yeah. Also, another good thing he got his music back on NXT. 
because they changed it. But they, they had a couple of matches on the main roster, which with new music, which wasn't very good. Um, like NXT, he's got his his old decent music back, which is nice. Yeah, and it slapped as well. That music, it's so good, so so good. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see Jinder back. Um, what are the what else to be having on New Year's Evil that were of any worth? Uh, the the ropes broke in the main event. Oh yeah, that was weird. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be a new uh, no, another match at some point. I think it's in February with a steel yeah, cage. Vengeance Day is that right? That's the one. Vengeance Day, and it's going to be a steel cage match, which should be fun. I think Grayson Waller should win. Yeah, I think yeah, I could definitely see um, Bond Breaker being called up soon. He's good. He's ready. For sure. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Good on the mic. He's very Steinerish. Yeah, big time. <laughs> um, and I think his in-ring work for the style that he wrestles is is solid enough. Probably better than some people that are on the main roster. Yeah. So yeah, I think he's ready, and I think Grayson Waller is a good heel to carry NXT forward. Yeah. It's very good. Very unlikable, yeah. which is great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like just an Australian Miz. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Mistralian. Mistralian. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, cool to see that Tyler Bates coming back next week. Yes, that's awesome. Big fan of Tyler Bates. And also Stevie Turner. She's making her return to NXT as well. I think basically the guys that didn't get released from NXT UK, they were basically sorting visas out. I think that was the big thing. Ah, uh, got you. That makes sense. So Tyler Bate and the likes, and I'm sure Blair Davenport will be following suit. Yeah. And I think it's the, a similar sort of issue with um, Dewdrop. So we spoke about Dewdrop oh. last week on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's something sort of similar with her as well, like some sort of visa issue that mm. they were just trying to sort out. So I think once all that's passed, you'll start to see these people come back. That's good. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. But N- NXT's good at the minute. Yeah. Um, anything else happening wrestling this week? I, I don't know. Not really. Um, it's a good match on Raw. Uh, Judgment Day, a number one contender for the specifically the Raw Tag Team Champion, Chips, which is interesting. They might be splitting, okay. up, they, splitting up the titles again. Good. Yeah. Which could be cool. And, but yeah, just in day, it was like Gauntlet match. They came in first, ended up outlasting everyone. So good showing from them. Really good match as well. Um, Finn, Finn Balor yeah, so injured. It's, it's, Domin- it's Dominic, isn't it? It's Dominic and Damian Priest. Uh, yeah, originally, it was Finn Balor and Priest, but then Finn got injured yeah. before the last match. Uh, K Fave injured. And then he got yeah. placed with Dominic. And then Dominic ended up winning by cheating, which is yeah. good. <laughs> and to so, Dominic- tell you what, they've, they've done a great job of um, building Dominic these last few weeks like <laughs> they're basically making him an idiot which is which is so great and, and he can't. it just works i mean look at how they've you know they've basically made Sami Zayn an idiot as well yeah and they've you know got Sami Zayn over you know to the moon basically and that i feel like they're probably trying to do a similar sort of thing with dominic where it gets to a point where people will just want to see how stupid he's going to be that week <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to make Sammy a, a face. Maybe it's the opposite report. Dominic, trying to make him as hideous as possible, or making him yeah. a, a coward, cowardly idiot, <laughs> basically. Yeah, but whatever they're doing is working very well at the minute. Yeah, but it's like how he came out. He's had like the the bandana on because he's been in jail. Yeah, <laughs> it's very funny, very entertaining. Yeah, it's 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 very very cool. Um, it's cool to see. Um, I mean, Alexa Bliss is 100%. So they're going to slowly build this faction with Bray Wyatt, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Because Uncle Howdy came out as uh, Alexa Bliss was uh, cutting a promo. Interesting to see where that goes. Uh, Uncle Howdy, by the way, is 100% Bo Dallas. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because Bo Dallas was backstage at Raw this week. Uh, Makes sense. You saw a picture from, um, from, from Raw last week with... Him with his mask on, and you sort of see like his facial features that you can see look yeah. awful, awful. Uh, both Dallas, both Dallasy. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So they're they're building some sort of faction with Bray Wyatt. There was a lot of talk of like Cameron Grimes being a part of it. I saw. Yeah, interesting. I'm not okay. sure if those plans are are carrying on or not, or whether they're going to change it. Mm. I know that Eric Young is back with WWE in some capacity, but obviously we've not seen him yet. Um. But, you know, at the minute, it's all guesswork. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I, everything I've just said is just guesswork, apart from the Bo Dallas thing, which is 100% fact. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, 
Um, they're, they're building a faction, and that's quite clear to see. I think they'll probably go with the Wyatt Six thing. Yeah, will be. I'm okay with that. That'd be, you know, White, White knows what he's doing. And then they've got like horror sure. story writers back, you know, helping out. Which is yeah. Really cool. So they'll, what they'll do is I'm sure they'll get through this match, uh, the Royal Rumble with LA Knight, with Bray Wyatt obviously winning. And I think that's when we'll start to see the Wyatt Six sort of come together. Yeah. That'd be yeah, cool. interesting time for that. But, you know, let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about the uh, the big elephant in the room. The potential spanner in the works of all this. Yeah. But again, this is all guesswork. No one really knows anything at the minute other yeah. than what we said wouldn't happen <laughs> has happened. And the old man, the senile, lunatic old man of WWE, Vince McMahon, is back in an executive chairman position in the company with yes. a view to sell the company. Yes. I see conflicting report. Every time I take Twitter, there's a new report and it's conflicting every time. So yeah, it started off saying it's a Saudi deal is 100% done. They're going to sell the company to Saudi. That's ready. And then look later. Okay. It's not finalized. There's people that have been in the WWE have said like, this isn't a thing at all. And they're still looking at things. And I saw earlier today that maybe they're not even selling at all. Maybe they're doing something else. I don't know. But Nick Khan has also been in meetings with a guy from Disney and a guy from ESPN. So I think they're still exploring their options. But in reality, nobody knows what the hell's going on. Yeah, nobody knows. Um, you know, everyone's sort of like, oh, Vince is back in an executive position now. 100% it's going to take back creative. Um, there's not been any indication to suggest that that is going to happen. Yeah. Again, it's all very much just guesswork. And, you know, it puts WWE in a, in a state of flux. Yeah. I, I think, think it's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah. I think the main worry is for people is um, if he's selling their company, he could very easily put like a clause in there saying he's only willing to sell if he gets to be in charge of creative. And if the company goes private, and then there's nothing stopping him from going, putting himself back in charge of creative. No, but he must look at the company as it is currently mm. and how well it's been doing um, from not only sort of bringing fans back who had potentially dropped off, bringing a different caliber of fan back also that may have sort of drifted away to AEW to get their, you know, better wrestling fix. Mm. But he must see how the ratings for Raw have gone up. He must see how the ratings for SmackDown are, are real steady, but not only that, the ratings for NXT are up. Yeah. You must see all of this. And yeah, he's not going to like it because it's not him doing the booking. And it, he's not the reason that the ratings are so high. But he must see this and think, okay, all right, the, the company's doing well uh, creatively. And business is booming from that aspect. Maybe it is time for me to just step back because nobody wants to see me come back to creative. Nobody wants to see me on television now look i know that vince mcmahon is a ridiculous egomaniac and there's no two ways about it he is yep <laughs> but there has to be part of him that sees lot sees reason here yeah at the end of the day he's a businessman he's a very good businessman he knows how to make money so hopefully the businessman in him will see the fact that they're making money without him being creative and think okay I'll, I don't need to be creative. We can stick, keep things how they are and we'll continue mm -hmm. to make as much money as we can. But then again, yeah. as you say, an egomani egomaniac, he wants to be in charge of everything. So, it, it, honestly, it, 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 nobody knows what's going on. It could go anyway, literally. They, they could sell it to it Saudi, could. they could sell it to Disney. They won't even sell it at all. It's, who knows? Who even knows? I think there, I think there must be reassurances in place for the people doing what they're doing at the minute. Yeah. Just so. yesterday, I saw that William Regal's official title of like vice president and chief executive of talent or talent and creative or something like that. So that there has to be some sort of reassurances for the people that are already there. Yeah. And Vince must see that those people are doing a phenomenal job, and we've had a great six months creatively, and the the product hasn't been this good in years. No, it, it's so good right now. Like, I look forward to it every every time I. You know, every like Tuesday, I look forward to oh, watch Wars last night and go, go get that. And before, I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, I guess I should probably scroll through Raw, 
see what happened. Now it's yeah. like I actually want to watch it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I it's a I, I look forward to watching it every week, and I haven't for a long, long time because you know you just skim through a lot of it. It's rubbish. It's the same thing all the time. But yep. you know, now it's is it. I don't have a problem with Vince McMahon being back in WWE if he stays away from the great work that Triple H and Triple H's team are doing creatively. Yeah. If he, if he stays just doing, being whatever he is, director or whatever, as you say, away from creative, then sure, whatever, fine. If he has to be there, then that's fine. Um, because let's be fair here, Vince never really... He was never really going to be 100% out of the picture because he's still the majority shareholder of the company. Exactly, yeah. It was still his company. You know, Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon um, were co-CEOs. Now Nick Khan is the sole CEO because Stephanie McMahon has left. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's also something, actually, that that is why people assumed Saudi had um, bought WWE already. Because, obviously, mm-hmm. if Saudi bought them, then they, they, can't, they, don't want, they don't want a woman in charge of things, you know, because Saudi are Saudi. So people assumed because yeah. Stephanie resigned so quickly, they thought, oh, Saudi must have bought them already. Um, yeah. So yeah, but apparently, no, they've jumped the gun on that and that's not what happened. Not, not what happened. She just resigned anyway because she was going to anyway, I guess. Yeah, I, th- I think it's, I'm, I'm not sure what it was. I mean, like you put something in our Discord um, just a few days back saying that, you know, it sort of looked like Stephanie was on her way out regardless of this because I think she wanted to step away. Well, she did step away before and yeah. then she was, when Vince retired, when all the stuff came out, you know, she came back to probably steady the ship. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, Nick Khan's going to be the, the sole CEO. So he is still the CEO. So he's the chief executive officer of WWE. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing in charge of day-to-day operations. I thought so, yeah. And apparently, day-to-day operations weren't going to change, regardless of Vince coming back or not. Yeah, I think we got the same. The whole reason we bought um, Nick Khan in the first place was to help uh, sell the sell the company, because apparently he's done, you know, that kind of thing in the past for other companies. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, so it looks very likely that the company is going to be sold, but we still don't 100 percent know who to or no. if it's even going to happen. So it's a lot of guesswork at the minute. Nobody really knows anything. Like yeah. you said, it might not be sold at all. Yeah. But there are, you know, the Saudis at the minute is quite interesting, really, with the Saudis. I mean, obviously, at this point, everybody just seems cool with the Saudi mania shows that they put on. Yeah. It's like, if you've got to have them, it's fine. It's fine. Once a year, sure. Yeah. You know, and everyone's sort of just been like, just accepting of it now. But Saudi Arabia. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to buy up a lot of sports stuff. Mm. Now, you know, they own they own Newcastle United, which is obviously a Premier League football team for those who aren't au fait with, with that. Uh, they've done, like, the Live Golf stuff. Um, I believe that's Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, and, you know, they've struggled to get a TV deal, but that's, it's a new golf thing. And obviously golf has been around for a long, long time with the PGA and stuff. So they've always had that, had... Golf has already had a place on TV, and obviously this new brand is trying to sort of work its way in there. But they've struggled to get a TV deal. So, you know, they are looking to invest in more sports-type things. Mm. I mean, we, we don't know what direction they would even try and take WWE in. Would they just buy it and let it just be ran the same way that it's been ran before yeah or like it is now you would hope yeah i think the period is... we don't really know yeah it's things like um will they be okay with women's wrestling taking center stage um things like that you know if they are looking to give their country a better name and a better look you would think that they would like to try and become more westernized yeah We'd hope. And respectful of what is already there. Because they're buying the company essentially as people know it. Yeah. I mean, if they change things where it's like, right, women's championship, that doesn't exist. Women can't be main event of shows. Women are, go back to being sort of, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, an afterthought type thing, then that's not going to fly with people and people will stop watching, which will lose money, True. which will then affect any sort of business plans that they have. Yeah, very true. So is it smart for them to do that? No, of course it isn't. So we, we have, like, nobody has any real clue. They just see the, the name and the word Saudi Arabia and automatically lose their minds thinking that it's a complete and utter shit show straight <laughs> away. And to a degree, I get it. I do get it. But people don't really, really know. They just see those words and just assume the worst instantly. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I think it's just the, the reputation Saudi has. Um, yes, of course, yeah. yeah. And I get that completely. I'm not, yeah. you know, I think it's a, a completely sort of, uh, I, I get that it's a, a Muslim country. Um, I'm not going to go deep. I'm not going to go into <laughs> religious stuff here or anything like that. No. And they obviously have their way of doing things and abiding by the religious sort of, stuff that they have to go by but i think in order to for them to succeed in enhancing their reputation they need to they need to change things yeah i think yeah they're trying i think the i don't know it's hard, it's, it's hard to know because it's, it's it is you're right it is really hard to know it's clear some people in charge want it to change but there's also a lot of shady stuff going on in that country so who, who knows yeah, and I, I, you know we can't sit here and say that we know the the full ins and outs of what goes on in Saudi Arabia because we don't. <laughs> no, no clue. <laughs> no, but neither does anybody else. You know who uh, is speculating as to what would happen to WWE should the Saudis buy it, which of course at this present time there are no guarantees that that is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it is all guesswork. It is all speculation. The big thing was that Vince Mc. Vince McMahon is, is back and autom automatically people think the worst. And again, that is totally understandable. But again, that speculation is really unfounded at this point. Yeah. All we can do now is wait and see, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it's all gone quiet over the last few days, over the last couple of days at least. I've not seen anything um, to suggest that WWE is completely down the pan. Yeah. And that's it's, it. Until we put this episode out and then... As soon as we stop recording, something will happen, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be out of there already. But WWE sold to Disney, Mickey Mouse, new CEO, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Oh, Goofy yeah. head of talent relations. <laughs> yeah, oh, I've been just getting sued again for something. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, once again by by a shareholder who said he's used his eighty one percent stake to regain power. Yeah, that's exactly what he's done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether a lawsuit would fly, but hey, look, more power to that guy. Yeah. I'm not a Vince McMahon fan. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, him being away from the company has made the company better over the last few months. Yep. But look, as long as he stays away from what the fans see and what the fans um, enjoy, then I couldn't care less what he does. Yeah, just, just stay away. As long Vince. as he doesn't fuck with it so badly, that yeah, it, it becomes an utter shit show and eventually kills the business, which would be terrible. Yeah, wouldn't it be great? No. So yeah, uh, have you seen Dynamite this week? Uh, yes, uh, I, I actually saw a lot of it live last night. I was oh, cool. uh, awake until the wee hours of the morning. So um, I thought Hangman and Moxley was good. Very good. Enjoyed that. And that was exactly what it needed to be as well, that kind of match. They both steamed into the ring, uh, you know, just wanting to beat the crap out of each other because yeah. they've had this rivalry, and that's exactly what it was. And I think the result was the correct result for Hangman to get a good victory, a good clean victory at that to sort of establish himself back as an active comp uh, competitor. Yep, big time. Fully agree. And yeah, great match. Really good match. Um MJF is a loose cannon, man. <laughs> yeah, MJF, man. He's, he's something else. <laughs> yeah, um, but he's just, he's just so good. When yeah. when you watch him and when he speaks, you're just, just completely captivated by it because you know that he could say anything at any time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like it's... Ken Jong was in the crowd, Mr. Chow from The Hangover, oh, yeah. and he just went off on him. Yeah. <laughs> That was funny. And then Freddie Prince Jr. was in the crowd as well. 
Um, <laughs> obviously, Freddie Prince Jr. looking to start a wrestling company of his own, former writer for WWE. And yes, he played Fred in the Scooby Doo movies. <laughs> so MJF just said, Hey, look, this guy, um, was it, what do you call him? Freddie Prince douchebag or something like that? Oh, no, Scooby Doo douchebag is <laughs> what he one. said, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> MJF doesn't give a fuck about anything or anyone. And, you know, AEW giving that platform, and that's fine. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, um, Adam Cole's The match back. that followed? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, Adam oh. Cole's back, of course. <laughs> yeah, Adam Cole, baby, good to see him back. Big, big, big Adam Cole fan. Happy he's feeling better. It sounds like he went through hell with his... He said he had two major concussions, yeah. one after another. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, he's all good. He said he had some bad news to follow. I was like, oh, no, is he going to retire? Is he still going to be away for a while? But no, he said the bad news. When he news. came out, yeah, I mean, when he came out in normal clothes and not like an Adam Cole t-shirt and stuff like that, I thought, yeah. and, and like a leather jacket, I thought, shit, this bad news could actually be bad news. Yeah. But no, the bad uh, news. But thankfully, no. It's for everyone else in AEW because I'm back, baby. Woo. Yeah. So yeah, everyone got uh, And I'm, I'm so happy that Adam, uh, Adam Cole is back. I'm so happy that he's healthy and I just hope he can stay healthy and, um, be the best that he can be because Adam Cole is, a, is an asset to any wrestling company that he's a part of. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan of him and I would love to see him as AEW champion one day. Yeah. He's just a, just a nice dude as well. <laughs> it's him on, because I check out his streams every now and then. He's just, you know, it's funny. He's an entertaining guy even when he's not in, you know, yeah. not wrestling. Yeah. He's just a cool guy. I like him a lot. I'm starting yeah. to tell you again. And, yeah, he's he's a big player for AEW as well. Uh, he's yeah. just so good, great on the mic, great in ring, and he's not wrong in what he said that he's probably one of the best professional wrestlers of the last ten years. Yeah, or however long he's been at it now. Yeah, so good. S a superstar, one hundred percent a superstar, big time. Um, hopefully, Kyle O'Reilly will come back soon as well. I know that he's been dealing with some real injury issues. Mm. Yes, but so hopefully he he can return soon as well. Yeah, Bobby Fish has been doing things. <laughs> sure, yeah, um, I, I couldn't care less about Bobby Fish. I have to be yeah, honest. he's kind of, he's kind of, I don't know, steamrolled himself. He's a lot fucked about, it for he? himself, hasn't he? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Where's the lie? Silence. <laughs> yeah. Boy. Total silence. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> so that, so yeah, Bobby Fish is a is a thing that's happening somewhere. But yeah. um, I thought Kanosuke uh, Takeska uh, Takesta with uh, versus Daniel Brian Danielson, almost Jay would it there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Brian Danielson. I thought that was excellent, and I knew it would be. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Two excellent uh, wrestlers. Yeah, Takeshita is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and I read a thing that they're going to be sort of, you know, looking to push him as a, a big star going forward, which is 100% uh, the correct thing to do because he's outstanding. Um, Good. And look, it's quite clearly obvious that. Brian Danielson is going to win all of his matches up until February the whatever um, and then get his match against MJF in an Ironman match, which I think will be great. Yeah. A 60 minute Ironman match. That'd be crazy. Yeah. And MJF will shit out his way to a victory. We know that. They're <laughs> going to keep that title on him for a long time. Yep. <laughs> but there's so much, there's so many people who could be the world champion in AEW at the minute. Yeah. Bloody contenders. Let's say Daniel Bryan Danielson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Adam Cole, Kenny Omega come back, come back in the picture. Yeah, yeah and, I think Kenny Omega is nice and preoccupied at the minute, though. True. Yeah, Adam Page. Yeah, yeah, Moxley still. Yeah, yeah, Billy Gunn. Jericho still. <laughs> yeah, Jericho definitely. Billy Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Come on. <laughs> um, hey, look, dude is in serious shape. Yeah, he's insane. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely ridiculous. Like you, when he when he wrestled Jeff Jarrett in that singles the other week, you're like, you know what? Yeah, that's the thing, right? Everyone has a go um, at the likes of Jeff Jarrett and Billy Gunn still wrestling, but look at the shape that they're in, and look at the quality of the matches that they're putting out. Yeah, they're good. Pro wrestling isn't complicated. At least it doesn't have to be. <laughs> yeah. And these guys are working smart to their means they're not trying to do anything they're not trying to push the limits they're doing what they've always done and that is working perfectly still for them uh, in 2023 and you know what fair enough more power to them yeah 
Good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and yeah, we have new trios tag team champions also. Yeah, another great match full of very dangerous spots. You know, uh, you know, standard uh, elite match, mm-hmm. <laughs> elite death triangle match. Uh, but yeah, very fun, good match. And yeah, elite, I feel like this is back where they're probably going to start off where they were going to what they were going to do the first time they were champion. You know, before they got suspended. I think so. So okay, now we're yeah. doing for real. This, <laughs> this is the real, this is yeah. what was supposed to happen in the first place. Yeah, definitely. And I think this was. You know, always going to happen. They were always going to win this best of seven series, but um, it's a best of seven series that has been very, very good, and they've done a really good job of making every match feel different yeah. in its own sort of special way, instead of it sort of just being the same match seven times. I think they've done a really good job of that. Yeah, really cool. Now, I want to talk about this because. I feel that AEW absolutely could have done a better job of this whole tag team match with Soraya. Yeah, that was weird. Soraya barely did anything <laughs> as well, which is strange. Um, but oh, not just that. You know, there was there was always the very heavy rumors that the um, the mystery, well, the tag team partner was going to wind up being Mercedes Monet. Frankie's yeah. sister. Now, <laughs> it didn't, and there was no hints that she was. There, there was just no hints whatsoever, yeah. and it was just Tony Storm. Yeah, I was like, when the game to me, I was like, oh, it actually is Tony Storm. Okay, cool. yeah, and I, I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, and because the rumors never went away. Maybe, maybe it's a most swear. I was like, okay, we tricked him into thinking it's going to be uh, Mercedes, but they can, they're going to wait and pull the trigger down the line somewhere. I don't know. I don't know what what they're playing at, but hopefully it happens soon. Maybe. But everybody was expecting it, and it just never materialized. Now, does that mean? I mean, it was set up perfectly. Yeah. You know, she's out of contract now. I know she's doing stuff with New Japan, but she's got to be in America anyway to to challenge Kyrie Sane for the IWGP Women's Championship at some point, uh, whenever it is. Yeah. So it, it almost felt like the stars were aligned for it to happen, and then it just n- didn't happen. And, you know, the teasers were still there. And, yeah, I just feel like it's a very weird situation and maybe one that AEW could have managed better to really sort of just put the fires out there. Yeah. Just be like, look, okay, yeah, this isn't what's going to happen and really take – because none of us really felt that it was ever just going to be Tony Storm. Yeah. It um, felt like yeah, you, know, you said last week Sheeta could attack her, and then uh, Mercedes could come in and be the be the mystery tag team partner after all. But it just didn't turn out that way, and just became but, Tony Storm and Soraya versus Britt and Jamie Hayter. Yeah, it all felt a bit flat, didn't it? It's like, oh, this is it. Okay. Yes. Um, so maybe they were going to do that, but because the, the rumors got out, they've changed their minds and going to wait a bit, or maybe there's some issue and um, Mercedes couldn't get back to I don't know AEW for some reason. Who knows? Well, maybe it was never part of the plan in the first place, yeah. and maybe the internet just assumed. But I maybe. don't think it's. I I firmly believe that the original plan was for Mercedes to be Soraya's tag team partner. Yeah, there's no, there's no smoke without fire, so, so clearly something's. The rumors don't pop about nowhere. So something, something must have happened. I think something's happened there. I'm not sure what, um, but yeah, I think something's definitely happened there for it to, to not come to fruition. Yeah, strange. But uh, very, very strange indeed. Um, I mean, does she go back to WWE after she's finished with her New Japan commitments? Maybe. Does she just do New Japan? Does she even want to wrestle in America? You know, for an American wrestling company. Who knows? But yeah, very strange. And yeah, I was still expecting Mercedes to turn up last night and she just didn't. Yeah. And is this just another failed ex WWE import now in terms of Soraya? Because let's be honest here, the only reason people gave two shits about this tag team match was because of the potential debut of Mercedes Monet in AEW. Now that's not happened. Is that just it and no one cares anymore. Yeah, I thought Soraya, now that hype's down, died down, it's not really done a whole lot. At least not for me. But it's like this has been a recurring theme, though, hasn't it? Yeah, 
It's like, I, I wanted to do well, and I, want, I wanted to put these awesome awesome matches, but she just hasn't yet. I know it's been a long time since she wrestled, so I don't, you know, I can't expect her to be have like five star no, matches course. out straight out of the gate, but it's just, yeah, it just kind of fell flat. Just like, oh, okay, she's back, cool. She's so gonna do anything. <laughs> it might sound harsh, yeah. I don't mean to sound harsh. I'm like, no, 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 I get it. She's great, but, but it's, it's just, it's just kind of we're waiting for something to happen. But, but Zoraya, nothing's really happened yet. There's like, yeah. yeah, and you know, but this has happened a lot now. Mm. You know, Athena, yeah, I know that she's the, the Ring of Honor women's champion. But they had that defended on Dark yeah. this week, That's, I think. Yeah. And she's not really done anything of any real worth yeah. since joining AEW. True. And I, I, I don't know. You know, people care. You know, they're like they, these people come in and the internet blows up like, oh, it's just huge for AEW. It's a great get for them. It's going to be a game changer. It's going to really take AEW to the next level. And then it just never happens. Yeah. And that, that's not me shitting on AW because I I enjoy it. I watch it every week and and I do enjoy it. But you know that then the the ratings don't change because of these people. They're not taking AEW to the the next level. They just become another person in AEW. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like even CM Punk when he came back, ratings went up for a while, but then it kind of came back down again when the Law kind of yeah kind of wore off and now it's gone completely so yeah but it, you know you look at it and they've gone back to you know jamie hater is the aw women's world champion yeah darby allen is the tnt champion you know jade cargill has been the tbs champion since it since its conception yeah true. and mjf uh, an aw original is the aw world champion mm. and the elite are the AEW Trios Tag Team Champions. And the Acclaimed and AEW Original, they are the AEW Tag Team Champions. So are any of these imports, I say imports, are any of these ex-WWE signings really that much of a, a game changer? I think the answer is no. Yeah, like it's cool to start with, but then when, once the hype dies down, it's like, okay, they're AEW now. And it's kind of there. It's kind of blending. That's just the it. They're just fitting in the. They're just in the background. Yeah, pretty much. You, you know, this kind of thing happens in WWE, and people are kicking off that they're not getting the opportunities that um, that they they should be getting or whatever. Where the fuck's Miro? You know <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what's he done? Poor Miro. Where, He's where so is good. he? Like, yeah, I think they've. I think they've massively dropped the ball with Claudio. Yeah. I yeah you know. He's the Ring of Honor world champion, but let's be honest here. Ring of Honor currently doesn't have weekly TV. It has a pay-per-view every now and then. And do people really care about it? Like, really? Like, really, really? I mean, I, I you know, it. Uh, the, the, he feels like he, he has a belt for the sake of him having a belt. But yeah. Ring of Honor really isn't a thing at the minute properly. So do people really care about it? Not really, no. Yeah, I mean it's cool. No, I, I don't think they do. I don't. I I, I think the Ring of Honor pay per views have been really good. Yeah, it's cool. But that they've it's... not given me a reason to care about Ring of Honor. Yeah, it's cool that it's around still. But as you say, there's not really, there's no weekly TV. So there's not really any reason to really because like who's even the champion anymore? You know, because I know it's Claudio and Athena, and I guess Samoa Joe is TV champion still. Yeah. Um, but you don't, we never. You no, know, there's no like Ring of Honor TV show. So we, so it's like, well, no, it's 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 just part. It's still part. It just feels like AEW championships. It's even more championships with AEW. It's just already like yeah. thirty of. So, so it's like, and I, I think it just confuses things. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it just, it, you know, there's too many people walking around with belts on the same show. Yeah, and if you're a casual wrestling fan watching AEW for the first time, you're not going to know what I'm going on the bits. And so, okay, no, this guy's, this guy's you... got belts. This other guy's got belts, but for a different company, but not for a different company. Be People will be like, like oh, okay, so what's Ring of Honor? Where where can I watch Ring of Honor? It's like, well, you can't actually at the minute because although they have, you know, the Honor Club thing and on Ring of Honor On Demand thing, there's no weekly TV at the minute. So there's no reason for you to care about those championships right now. And Death Before Dishonor is in March, I think, at the end of March. Oh, yeah. So that's still, a, that's still over two months before, you know, you get another uh, official Ring of Honor pay-per-view. So, 
yep, you brought these people in and yep, they have championships. But as it stands right now, I mean, I think Ring of Honor have a trios championship as well, but I couldn't even tell you who they are. Oh, yeah. It's the... Is it Dalton Castle and the boys? Or Yeah, I think it is actually, yeah. I think. But where are they? Exactly. Are they wrestling on dark and stuff? I, I don't yes. even know. Yeah. Man, I haven't seen them in a, long, in a long time. And I like Dalton Castle and the boys. Yeah, me too. Very entertaining. But, but, you know, I feel like Ring of Honor, when Ring of Honor starts, whenever that may be, will just become AEW light. Like right. AEW's yeah. version of NXT. But it, I just don't see it doing well. Do you know no. what I mean? And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way because obviously they are going to have talented people on there, but I just don't see it doing well. AEW doesn't do that well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rampage does shit numbers every week. Dynamite's not even touching a mi- uh, barely touching a million every week. What can they honestly be expecting from a Ring of Honor reboot? Yeah, exactly. That's why TV companies don't want to do what they're like. It's just seeing AEW. This is going to be like a, a lesser AEW. It's like, well, yeah, AEW's not is. doing that well, and why would we want you know a worse version of AEW? I mean, realistically, what can they expect from ratings every week for Ring of Honor? For a Ring of Honor weekly show? I mean, Rampage doesn't even touch 500,000 every week. Yeah, to be less than Rampage, I'd imagine. So. Oh, I think it'd be a lot less than Rampage. I think you're mm. probably looking uh, 300,000 at most. Yeah. First week, maybe a lot higher, just out of interest to see what they do. But there's, there's a lot of wrestling as it is. A lot of mainstream wrestling as it is. Yeah, I think we just slap it on YouTube or something for now. <laughs> Make a weekly YouTube show or something. At least to be out there making something, making some money. Um, Maybe show it on yeah, Twitch I, live I don't or know. something. Who knows? But they, this goes back to my point of bringing these ex WWE guys in, and are they actually doing any better than what they were doing in WWE? Is the Ring of Honor Championship really that much better? Than you wrestling for the Intercontinental Championship on SmackDown on a you know or whatever. Yeah. The answer is the answer is no. Not so much. But yeah, unless you're unless you're like a John Moxley or Chris Jericho, um, probably grass, the grass isn't always green on the other side. I'd say so. No, Adam Cole is obviously going to be a big star in AEW. Yeah. But you know Keith Lee, I feel like Keith Lee is yes he's been the AEW Tag Team Champion, but that team has now broken up and Swerve is with. Um, two green guys. He's uh, that Parker Baud- Baudreau or however Hello. you pronounce his surname. Yeah. Um, and some other guy that I've never heard of. <laughs> um, and yeah, Keith Lee's a really good example because like he was, he had so much potential going in WWE. The people, you know, yeah. saying he's going to be right up the card and then just out of nowhere, boom, he's gone. So then we went to AEW. I thought, oh, finally he's going to be treated as like a proper world champion. And I uh, went straight into tag division, and now he's. I don't know where he is. He wasn't on TV this week. So. No. Yeah, no. strange. Uh, uh, Malachi Black. Yeah. You know, the House of Black is cool. Uh, but I feel like because they've already fucked it up, it now, it means a lot less than what it probably did before. Yeah. Oh, it's just such a cool idea for a stable. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's yeah. indicated in dropping the ball a little bit. I think so. I think they've. I think they've. They've dropped the ball on multiple occasions. Mm. But I think it just goes to show that bringing these WWE guys in doesn't always work. If you've got nothing for them, don't bring them in. If you, you know, they. they Miro was the TNT champion for a, a little bit, but yeah. his run was so unmemorable that he may as well still be doing Rusev Day in WWE. Yeah. It's it's the problem people had with WWE, like people just sitting in the back, not like all these talented people sitting in the back not doing anything. Um, and people complained about that when it was happening in WWE, and now it's happening in AEW, and it's like they're not they're not learning from WWE's mistakes. It seems like no, they're they're just they're just making more mistakes, or the same mistakes even. Yeah, and it's it's very very bizarre. I mean, they're, they're, they've obviously there's a lot of ex WWE that have gone over. Um. But, you know, Miro is re- Miro really stands out to me. I mean, you know, Miro should be a megastar. Miro has all the tools to be the world champion in any company, yep. whether it be AEW or WWE. 
But, you know, and apparently something was pitched to him creatively, but he didn't want to do it. Mm. I personally don't think he wants to be there anymore. I think he wants to go back to WWE. Maybe. Um, and they would probably bring Lana back and they would probably go ahead and be Rusev and Lana again. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, is it, but is it you know this this is a classic case of the grass isn't always greener, and you're right. Yeah, this isn't the strongest shit on AEW, by the way. We like AEW. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's great TV. I watch it Dynamite every week. It's really really good and fun. But yeah, we're just saying. And <laughs> my personal opinion is that Claudio would have probably been better off going to Impact and being the Impact World Champion. Maybe. I think that would have been better for him than him just being the Ring of Honor. No t no weekly TV show champion. Yeah, yeah. The Blackpool Combat Blackpool Combat Club is cool, but they're kind of gone their own way now. That's you know Regal's gone, so it's like. Well, the guy from from Blackpool is, <laughs> has gone back to WWE. He's not there anymore. Yeah. So, so now they're just the Combat Club. Yeah. So yeah, it's in a, they're in a weird in a weird place. Need to figure figure something out. Yeah, I mean AW Weekly TV is very very good, but it's very very good without these ex WWE guys. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, if you're in WWE currently and you're looking potentially, you know, oh, I could I could go to AEW. Yeah, great. But you have, I guess it's now at that point where you're going to go to AEW but not necessarily be a big fish. Yeah, exactly. Just gonna blend you're going to go to AEW and be another number. Yeah. Be hot for a few weeks and then fade away. Exactly. And I get it. Not everyone can be on TV every week, and not everyone can be doing great stuff. So if that if that's the case, stop signing people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying WWE are great. But, you know, are great for bringing people in and having them do great stuff straight away because they're not. But um, I think a lot of these ex WWE guys maybe regret the decision to go to AEW. Um, yeah, ah, full so yeah. stop. Something I've noticed now on in WWE is, although people aren't on TV every week, they're at least they're at least in storylines there around. You know, like we had Bron Bronson Reed wasn't in the match or anything, but he was backstage. Uh, Nikki Gross wasn't involved in anything, but you did see her backstage kind of stalking uh, Candice LeRae during an interview. So yeah, like still Bronson around. Reed, they're playing video packages for and and stuff like that. Yeah, so they're still mentioned it. Mustafa Ali was doing stuff uh, backstage. Yeah. So, instead of round, so at least they're, you know, doing stuff even if they're not on TV every week or they have matches every week. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a very strange one, but I don't know. Yeah. But still, wrestling, it's good. Wrestling's great. Wrestling's <laughs> good. You know, yeah. regardless of whatever's going on backstage in WWE currently, which, you know, is a mess. There's no two ways about that. Um, because it's all very seems very much up in the air, and that must be shit for the talent, and it must be shit for the other executives and other people involved in just everyone involved in WWE. But uh, the wrestling itself on TV that the fans get to see is very, very good across the board. And I, I don't watch Impact; I keep up with it on social media. But apparently, that's very good, also. Cool. So yeah, there we go. The wrestling's good still, despite the backstage drama <laughs> yes it's a for now i'm gonna like, try and ignore the drama because like every every couple of hours it's something new and it's always different <laughs> it's like probably yeah it's always con everything contradicts each other and it's like it's, it's, nothing makes sense no one knows it's just clear no one knows what's going on so it's, what's even the point of looking at it yeah you know no one knows what's going on it's all guesswork and then the, that guesswork leads to everyone having a meltdown on the internet <laughs> and then the meltdowns turn out to be unfounded because of Oh, it's just one big. Just enjoy the wrestling, yeah. Enjoy yeah. your sports entertainment. Enjoy your pro wrestling. Enjoy whatever you enjoy. Just enjoy it, whilst it's in such a great place, and whilst there is so many talented guys and girls wrestling all over the world. Yes, absolutely. Until something comes out from WWE officially, just ignore it. It's not worth. Just ignore about. it. Yeah. yeah. Just ignore it. You'll enjoy it a lot more. Believe me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, have you got anything else you want to talk about? Um, that's about it, really. We hope you enjoyed our dumb go segment. It was awesome. We yeah. loved it. <laughs> it was so ridiculously stupid and so ridiculously 
unplanned. Well, like we planned the bit, <laughs> but then planned nothing for it, so we just winged it. Yeah, I mean, it made, we made gate noises. It's about what we did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it popped us. We hoped it popped you. Yeah, it made us laugh. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing. We just make ourselves laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 166 of the Games and Grass podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash games grabs. Yes. My name is Sonny G and I've been here as always with Finn Steele. Thank you. And we will see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Check out Added Time and all of us on social media. I forgot to mention it, but I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Added Time. Uh, Twitch.tv. That's last deep and seal. There you go. Yeah. <laughs>